project I've been working since last year called uh, The Circle. The Circle, um, as you can see, is a printed book. Uh, the first three issues are available for purchase through the Rising Sun website, which is um, risingsuncomics.com. Uh, you can jump on there and actually order it at this time, so it's available to purchase, right? So you you can actually buy a physical copy, uh, either through um, certain stores or through the website, or um, you can actually uh, subscribe to all the other books that are available from risingsandcomics.com. Now, us as a small uh, indie publisher here in New Zealand, um, excuse me, uh, Excuse me, just I was outside, I think a bit of a hay fever, um, hay, whatever, pollen. Uh, we're able to print our own comics through, um, you know, it's our own studio called um, Plunge Studios. There we go. Um, and it's uh, something as I started a while ago called, you know, as under the auspices of um, Rises and Comics New Zealand Small Print Studio way back in 2007, 2008. But later on, we just left, you know, joined up with Rising Sun Comics International uh, with all the different uh, divisions there. And then last year, end of 2018, you know, we got back with Rising Sun Comics and, you know, figuring out how we're going to work and put these comics that have been working on way back in 2008 into print again. Because I'd sold like over a hundred thousand issues. Well, not sold, but given away over a hundred thousand issues of the circle, which is pretty to be. Uh, you know, which was, I'm glad we gave it away because when I look back at it, uh, the digital copies were very messy, and it was, uh, you know, it was just I'd, I'd been trying so hard to work on so many different um, ways of putting it together, uh, especially because it's a digital comic and. The circle itself, a um, bit of background, is a project I did uh, when I was at uh, when I was at film school. When I went to film school, my whole pro um, idea was to, add, add, as part of my third year project, a final uh, project would be a feature film. Otherwise, I would never decide to go to film school and spend my three years there. So I knew that they had they said you know uh, that you, you we had a after learning all the uh, ins and outs of how to make a film. Of course, I'd already learned how to do that on my own, my own friends and um, and using my own fa uh, family's handy cams and friends' handy cams to learn how to put together short films. So I was aware of doing that. And also, as you know, I was I used to do my own productions through um, through a, uh, a church church organization here locally. So I'd learned all how to direct, how to act, how to produce, how to write. All the stuff. So when I went to film school, you know, like I said, I my whole idea was to make a feature film uh, because I'd done short films, but I wanted to do a feature film. And so um, I spent three years writing and rewriting, editing this um, the circle um, script, the film script, right? From from the as soon as I got there, I was like, I gotta, you know, I gotta be able to do this. Uh, write a script that I can actually turn into film. So when I when I was writing, I had all these different ideas of these four characters. Um, there was um, Brian, Chris. Uh, oh gosh, no, I forgot the names. Brian, Chris, uh, Anwar, who was actually Anwar, the Indian character, and it was actually a uh, a Japanese character originally. I had actually written some of the original script have, had him as a Japanese character because I'd been watching a lot of Japanese uh, crime crime drama and I just and actions and I wanted to have a um, Japanese um, Asian character and also because uh, I really loved it um, loved the Asian culture and because they had a different way of doing filmmaking and stuff like that you know watching kung fu and samurai movies and stuff like that but when i got there um i realized that i wasn't able to do that so i changed the character himself and made him into an indian character anwar and i was able to find people in invercargill where i studied who who were able to help me actually come on board and film a feature film the film was about one point uh one hour and 50 minutes long so I uh, wrote a um, you know wrote about 70 80 pages of script and 
in the third year, which was in 2006, I was able to uh, organize with my producer and my friends to find the right people to be able to uh, act in it. And it was it was really tough because a lot of the people that were um, setting it off, because a lot of people that hadn't were, were in it, only two of them were actually actors, and they were the they were the cops, and they did a really good job. And one of them, uh, one of the cops was um, I think it was Farron, uh, Fa Fa uh, Farian of um, I can't remember the real name, the actor. Hopefully he's still acting. I haven't been in touch with him lately for a few years. But one of my friends who actually worked on it is um, Darren Ludlow. He's one of the cops in it. And Darren was an, was a journalist, Twitter, but he was such an amazing, amazing person to work with. Uh, also, you know, he was having a tutor come on board and help out was amazing. And it's just, this is, it was a real passion project, of course. Uh, because, you know, like I said, I, I had gone there with the idea to do this, um, to make sure that I made a feature film, that also that I was able to finish it and, uh, you know, and make sure that um, I fulfilled the dream that I had prior to actually getting there. So that was, a, you know, you think about four years, three and a half years of actually trying to put all this together, learning all the skills and stuff. So we had some amazing people work on this project. Uh, we had Mains, who's actually hangs out on our, on our Facebook here on our comic trade page. And so, you know, and um, we also had, um, and um, if I remember, Ostiels, I can't remember, he was a South African guy who was, um, who was down there, African, uh, that being white uh, African, uh, who was down there learning how to be an actor. And it was in his first year, and he came on board and um, became our villain. Also, I had my friend Nick, who was my classmate, and Mains was also a classmate who came on board and helped out. And Anwar, who was, um, I can't remember his real name, who was a student who was studying, I think, in Dunedin at the time, but who, was, who I met and said, hey, would you like to be in a film, you know, help me out and come on board and uh, help me out with the acting. And the cool thing was, like these, these all these guys were volunteers, so they weren't um, apart from um, one of the cops. They were all volunteers on our project, and so the, I, you know, so getting all these guys together, we had a two week, two week period during the school holidays, uh, like the uni break, where we could get them all together to in one place to be able to film this um, these scenes. And that was, uh, it was really, really great with my producer, uh, Kat, if I remember right. She was amazing organizing it all, you know, putting all these people together and, and you know, for the two week period, organizing it all. We had, uh, you know, most of us were just doing different, different jobs. I was doing the filming, I was doing the directing, you know, doing the cinematography. Um, and I'd written it in a way, uh, we also had, um, one of our lighting guys, who who's a, who is a uh, son of a uh, who is who is in my also, also in our class, uh, can't remember his name, but his dad was on good. His dad was an editor, Google Hunting, um, and so and he was also that that person was also my tutor at the time. So we had also another friend who was a, a part uh, actor uh, called um, Aaron, who's who's. A, who's a good friend of mine and he you know helped out like i said a lot of our own friends helped out in this um and um uh, it was a real good time you know and um uh, it was it was a and when i was there i, I was you know we all pitched into our, on other people's projects to help out so after i came away from having finished the film project I went into um, left there, and I came out and did, uh, worked on for on short films for a couple of months with other people in Auckland, and then I worked full time as a salesperson because that's my background as a salesperson, and so I was working at Target Furniture in Auckland, and uh, while there, you know, I I didn't have any other time to do any uh, work, so I couldn't get back into film, and because it was shift work, so I had Sunday and Monday off, so I couldn't get out to people on the films, uh, you know, the, everybody wanted me to, I had people coming up and, hey, can you help me out with this? Uh, you've got all these skills, can you come and help me on a short film? Can you do this? I, I was like, no, I can't because I got to provide for my, um, you know, for my wife at the time and um, I have to pay the bills and I cannot go and do filmmaking. 
you know, I'll help you guys out with directing or uh, lighting or whatever. So I didn't thought, well, what do I do? I can't do this, but I still want to keep this passion going uh, with films and stuff. So I, I sat around home with, um, with, um, with publisher, you know, Adobe publisher, an illustrator, and so I got a little mouse out, you know, got my little mouse out. Didn't, at that time, I didn't know how to, uh, there was programs like, uh, uh, you know, like um, Manga Art Studio where it make it easy. You could just get your old stylus out and start, you know, buy a tablet and start working on it because I'd actually given my tablet away at the time um, that I had because I wasn't really interested in art because even though I've got a background in art and uh, stuff, I went to filmmaking and decided to stick with filmmaking. So, excuse me. So I spent two years basically on my days off work illustrating by hand and digitally by with a mouse uh, because I've, I've, as you guys have I've showed you before that I have a hand injury and I find it really hard to hold a pencil or pen for a long time. I Probably 15 minutes is the most I can have hand, hold it, otherwise my hand gets stuck in a position and gets painful uh, due to a hand injury almost 20, over 20 years ago when I was about 21, if I remember right, or 22. First year of art school, which was a really bad thing to happen. Um, all my fault, sadly. Um, so I, I stayed, you know, like I said, on my days off, I just get the mouse out, um, get on the old computer and just dot, 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 attach, you know, attach the old um, points together and now you have that. So what I did was I would get like, uh, I would get the photos of, uh, if I have it here, things in the, and I would get screenshots of the, of the film, right? So screenshots from the film, and the right ones that I wanted to do as turn into a um, turn into a um, a panel. So I'd get something like a photo of a screenshot of the right position of the guy's face, and then I'd go around with, around each of the little points of the uh, eyes and stuff, and fill it in with black within the mouse points, right from Illustrator. And so then I'd go in again, and then I'd you know round it off a bit. And so that that became a like a almost a two year project of putting that all together, just going point to point to point, and it was, you know, it took two years because it was so tedious work. It was like you know at times I just wanted to throw it all away and just say why am I even bothering? But after um, you know after each issue was done, you know, imagine breaking up an entire film into, uh, into um, panels and getting the right emotions, choosing which one worked, which one didn't work, and then placing it in, in, on a comic page and saying, this is how this one look, this is how this will look, and retelling the story in a comic form after having told it as a film. So it's basically going backwards, right? So instead of doing the comic book first, I did the movie first, and now I'm turning it to comic book. Now I'm hoping but once the issue six comes out, my plan is that hopefully somebody somewhere around the world will be able to pick it up and go, hey, we could make a feature film out of this. And I'll be like, okay, go for it. You know, I'm happy for this to be turned into a feature film again. Low budget, doesn't matter, 10K feature film. It's very, um, you know, it was done on a very small budget. I think I only spent $500 on food and stuff. And, and, and one of the things was I forgot to mention was that I actually during that three years I actually planned, while I was writing it, setting up the film, I went to I um, uh, went to Fiji on a holiday because I think one of my family members was getting married or something, and so I had an opportunity to do a a background shot for uh, like a a backstory. Uh, I think it was like a three minute backstory that I was able to do in Fiji on our property uh, from family plot in Fiji. And I got on my cousins to dig a hole and there's a, like there's a, if you read the comic book, I hope you do pick it up. And of course you can get it now on digital. I think it's about issue five, four, it's up to issue four is available now on digital uh, through Rising Sun, through Amazon, through Kindle, through drive through comics. Um, I'll find, I'll, hopefully I'll find the link and put it there, but you can basically um, get to Rising Sun Comics 
dot com and be able to um, you know be able to see it there uh, so so I was able to film the three minute back backstory for one of the characters Anwar when he was in Fiji and talking about his um, left foot. So, so what is the story about? So, excuse me, I forgot to close the door. Whoa, uh, there's an ambulance inside my door. Uh, looks like um, looks like one of our neighbors who is um, I think he's a paraplegic might have had an issue uh, hopefully it's okay oh man uh, okay uh, yeah so what is the story about okay so the circle the circle is basically about four four guys or right? uh, four uni students um, who who are um, who play a game called the circle so the circle is basically uh, about five questions and it's uh, th these five questions are very uh, unique in that they, they involve these guys and kind of like trying to fulfill their fantasies try to tell the truth about themselves that nobody else knows uh, sharing personal very personal things and the whole thing it's about um, it's about um, getting a price uh, of ten thousand dollars and uh, it's like a, they all put a certain amount of money into a kitty and um, and they win whoever has the best thing picked out and they win but there's a deeper uh, deeper background content to this where uh, where there's the main one of the, the the main character is basically trying to say you know he's got his own plan right so he's basically in that um, setting everybody up and we don't know why he's doing it and we find out slowly so this thing this story like i said was written way back in 2003 2004 so it's nothing to do with our current situation uh climate cultural climate whatever so it deals with four males with at you know just uni students going through their life studying some of them part-time jobs some of them not some of them married some of them not some of them um, have uh, you know they're four different situations personal situations in their life they got girlfriends they don't have girlfriends you know um, they do whatever they do and you know some of them are in the same class some of them aren't uh, during the uh, tertiary education so it's really looking at um, these characters and it's a crime noir drama so it's not like a superhero book or anything like that these are real people going through their real lives and um, and then right off the bat you know Anwar right um, let me see if I got issue one Anwar is getting is it um right let's go here so Anwar right Sunday October 3rd um, 9 p.m. Anwar is in, um, you know, at a uh, at a police station. Sorry, got zipped out there. Um, in a police station. So there is my, uh, one of our uh, one of our friends who's actually at Darren here. He's actually I think he's either a two IC mayor, or assistant mayor, or mayor of actually Invercargill right now. Whoops, there he is. Yeah, there he is. And. Um, you know, um, I'd like to actually, um, sometime I'll get Darren on here and talk about it, Chicago and what the situation there is now. But, um, you know, as you can see, there is Anwar here, you know, looking full on. Hopefully that's a word, or sullen. And he, it starts off by, um, like this, goes, Sunday, October 3rd, 9.33 p.m. Uh, what do you, th so this is off screen and they're talking and Anwar's, you know, there, just, um, you know, standing there looking for lawn and and off screen you know, what do you think and he goes i don't know look i'm going back to the hospital want me to say some hi to your missus um that's one of the cops to um the other cop because yeah tell the usual you know girl and the other guys goes don't i just we'll be home late bloody bloody thing took long what can i say and they laugh <laughs> reckon she will be having a busy night in on the ward too yeah, I guess so. Anyway, press the record button. I'm going in. All right. And so then he goes, 
he walks in into the I guess the um, investigation room or question questioning room and he goes Anwar is it and he goes yeah so then we get the pan um, panel um, saying whoops who Anwar is and what he's about so he goes Anwar Shuresh Dutt 25 in a relationship studying commercial art and then he goes so the police officer goes okay our detective goes okay okay then we would like to know how your friend ended up dead and, the, and Anwar goes it's a long story I got all the time in the world Anwar and I think the best thing for you to do right now is to be straight up with me and help us with our investigations so far we've got one dead and three suspects not to mention one of those suspects is in critical condition in hospital and my captain wants answers as to what happened this afternoon with the four of you as I'm sure the parents of your friends will probably be wondering as well my partner detective Monroe is in the next room in the room next door questioning one of your other mates as I will be verifying with him during um, so sorry so try to be honest with your answer as I will be verifying with them during the interview to make sure your stories add up. Anwar goes, sure, okay. All right, why don't you take a seat and we can begin. Well, it had to do with the circle. And um, so the detective goes, what's the circle? It's a game that Brian invented. One of the ones involved in this. Yeah, that's it was his idea. It was his, all his idea, okay. No, really, I mean, he came up with the game. So this game, right, how did it start? We'd all been playing a game of hazard. So then it, that's the setup, and we just carry on into them. So, so we basically got uh, Anwar and Chris being interviewed by the police, and that's what's currently happening. And then you've got all this uh, background over the next six issues about how what's happened, what led them to being in the, arrested and being at the police station, and it's and like I said, you know, when you when you're working on your first feature film. There is you have to cut so many corners uh, financially to be able to do, you know, to tell the story one without jeopardizing that financially, but still be able to create the work you want to put out to say, hey, here, this is this is what I with all the the, the least amount of budget and the least amount of personnel I could get, I'm still able to do that. Of course, when you, if you, you know, if you do it as a comic book, you can blow up things, you can have aeroplanes flying around, helicopters, buildings falling down, all that. But when you're actually making a film or a short film, unless you have a huge budget, you know, you can't really do much. And so that was the whole focus of me saying, how do I make this, tell a sto good story and do it within the limitations we have the cool thing about limitations is that I know a lot of people go well I'm limited by this I'm limited by that and I'm you know I can't do that I can't do that and I say well use those limits those boundaries of uh, to simplify to really hone in your project to tell it in a way that you can actually set it up and put it out there and still have your dream reach the audience that you want and I think, you know, once you get that one project done, then you can actually go, oh, okay, achievement unlocked, right? What's the next level? Who's the next boss I got to deal with? You know, if, if you think of it as a game thing. And that's the way you have to look at whenever you do want to look at a project. Do the, take the first step and do it. You know, back in the day, you had Nike with just do it. And I take 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 that on board every day. I uh, I challenge myself all the time. You know, I myself to learn this uh, streaming out thing. Uh, sometimes I mess up, but hey, you still push the limits. Now's the time if you're at home to work on a project that you got to to really really uh, do anything that you can think of that you were putting off. You have the time now to do that. And like I said, I had three three and a half years to pull this to uh, this film together and then i had another extra two years of just two days off work you know my weekends being a sunday and a monday being shift work while working full-time right going to work full-time 40 hours a week and then coming home exhausted and then spending my free time that i had working on other projects so i don't think 
you should be limited by saying, well, I only I like to come home and relax. That's fine. Do that. But if you have a project, there's no reason not to do it. And even now, you can still write some notes down that you can work through. And you don't have to do it all at once. You can put it through and work it over months, years, right? So, like I said, with us, with building, you know, with uh, Sun, um, Plunge, the whole idea of putting a, uh, this project together with Plunge Studios and with the Sunspot magazine, we're going to be um, relaunching this week. I'm really working hard to make sure that we can do that this week. Uh, right in the middle of the lockdown or the tail end of the lockdown that, you know, it's, it's tough having so much to do, but if you don't do it, you'll never, at this time, you'll keep putting it off, keep putting it off. Don't put off projects that you've wanted to work on. It's not a, because what will happen is you procrastinate, you procrastinate and you won't get done. Like I said, it took me three years to put it together. And then when, uh, in 2018, when um, Hawk from Rises on Comics said, hey, look, you had that book. Do you want to put it out in print? We can make it available. We can print it. We can do this. I said, yeah, but I need to revise it. There's a lot of mistakes I made with it when I was doing the comic book 10 years ago. It was like 2008, right, 12 years ago. So I, I had to go back and re revise some of the text, some of the bubbles. I, had to, I reworked every, almost everything every single bubble and I had to rework every single font, rewrite some of the spelling mistakes and uh, set it up again, all over again. And it, it's taken me a year, just over a year now, a year and a half we're going into to get these six books out. But I'm, I'm excited to see it finish, to get all these six out. So do me the favor, go check out Rise of the Comics, go check out, um, it's a mature reader's book, right? So please note, it's not something you want to give to your kids because, let me see there, it's for mature readers, right? So uh, it's three nine nine in print because it comes with this beautiful hardcover, right? It's it's a very, you know, very uh, prestige type cover. These are probably the last six that will probably, from us, will print the prestige cover. And also the black and white pages, they're not the uh, newsprint, they're quite um, thick pages. So only, the only co colors you get is the back and front um, inside covers. And of course, you know, we were uh, promoting Plunge last year. And of course, we've got Plunge coming up as well. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys following us on, on here. And also, if you're watching this on um, YouTube, please subscribe, uh, please share. Really appreciate you guys, uh, you know, helping us indie creators get out with their projects. And like I said, I've got one more issue to finish, and it's going to be all out. And I'm excited. Uh, I'm busy on so many projects, but I want to get this the circle finished and out. You know, and like, and if you haven't got, you know, of course you're at home, you want something to read and something mature to read. Try the circle. Get onto horizonuncomics.com. Get to the links to get through Amazon with a Kindle. Get a digital copy. It's only I think it's only about two dollars per issue. Um, and hey, help a brother out, right? Um, get us, help us, uh, indie creators, get out there. And of course, we're going to try to, you know, we've been trying to get these in shops as well uh, to help the shops out, right? Like I said uh, on previous broadcasts, get to, you know support your comic shops, right? They are they are the you know lifeblood of uh, of the comic industry, no matter what anybody says. So thank you once again for watching. Uh,